Hey everyone, it's Jay and Sean and today we've got a couple of Disney nature documentaries to tell you about. But first... Iron Man. <laughs> well, you could call it that. I am calling it a duster. It is actually a duster. <laughs> um, our good friend at Hardworking and House Proud let us know that one way we could improve our videos is to hold a feather duster. Now, I feel like she is just a little biased. She's a house cleaner. That is what she enjoys doing, apparently, according to her YouTube channel, and that's all she does. So does she just want to convert us? Or she noticed a little dust in the background? <laughs> could be, could be. Anyways, this is actually a duster. That's what it does. It can be two things at once, guys. Um, but yes, we've got two wonderful nature documentaries that are both available for streaming on Disney+. Plus. So it seems a lot of you guys were watching Elephant. It does. Um, which we really enjoyed. I'm glad that you guys were liking it too. So we, there was a lot more actually to discover on Disney+. Plus. Uh, the first one we watched was Dolphin Reef. So that came out the same day as Elephant did. It is narrated by Natalie Portman. And guess what it's about? Dolphins. It is about dolphins. It's yes. about it's about a three-year-old blue uh, bottlenose dolphin named Echo, and so he and his mom are swimming in the beautiful Polynesian uh, waters. Um, gosh, it's so beautiful, beautifully photographed. It is, eh? yeah, oh it's so gosh. colorful. There's tons of marine life that we get to see. Not just a dolphin. No, that is the very nice uh, thing about it. Uh, I love underwater. Like to me, that that's everything. I don't love space as much as I love under the sea. Uh, we have aliens right on this planet. There are spectacular creatures yeah, there's weird under stuff there. Down there. Um, and yeah, and the shallow water stuff is so colorful and, and incredible, really. And I do love that we got to do some snorkeling with the Disney crew. Um, we also get to see some whales, a mother-daughter duo, um, which is nice to follow them. But I think Echo and his mom are the primary story, and he is, like I said, three years old. So apparently in, in dolphin years, that's, you're almost a man. And so Mama Dolphin is trying to impart some valuable lessons trying about to move being him out a of the dolphin. House. Yeah. Trying to kick him out, get out and be on your own, son. And he's still kind of a playful guy. He's not really quite taking to it as much as he should. But she's a very good and patient mother and she's showing him all the ways and so it's it's really kinda cute to follow them, but they have some dolphin friends and they have some dolphin enemies. And, um, and then there's just lots of other creatures besides that we get to explore and make friends with ourselves. So it was a really, I thought, a really fun documentary. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And as you said, the underwater photography is amazing. So amazing. Just all of the close-ups of this stuff that you've probably never seen before. Obviously, dolphins, yes. <laughs> we know what those look like, but there was like a little shrimp guy who was <laughs> his own little character. I've never seen a shrimp look like that. Mm -hmm. And some other underwater stuff. The cuttlefish. The cuttlefish, Ooh, which is a really weird looking thing. It's, it definitely is. And uh, it's really amazing to think that all this stuff <laughs> is just, <laughs> just under the surface. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is kind of, because for the photography to be that amazing, you know that obviously lights are, like the sun is still able to penetrate. They're fairly shallow waters where we're, where we're looking. Um, so it, it is really cool to be able to see, you know, the dolphins feeding themselves, hunting together. Gosh, that's, that's so amazing that we get to see that. It's right in our living rooms. And it's a great thing, I think, for people who are trying to, feed their kids a little less junk screen time. It's a little uh, homeschooling. So yeah, that's right. And, it, and it's fun to watch because Disney, you know, gives you a nice little narrative to follow. So they're making a story out of it. Um, that might have been even more true for the second movie, <laughs> yeah. Penguins. Uh, so uh, in this case, we're, we're seeing some Antarctic penguins, Adelie penguins. Uh, and we are uh, making friends with a penguin named Steve. 
Now, they don't wear name tags. I'm not sure how Disney even knows his name is Steve, but he does kind of seem like a Steve. He does, he seem, does like seem like a Steve. Like a Steve. And you'll, as you get to know him, you'll know he pulls a lot of Steves. Like this, <laughs> yeah. again, he's almost like Echo Age in terms of penguins, where this is his first spring where he's an adult, officially an adult penguin, who's going to make the trek along with the other male penguins to the breeding grounds. So the men have to do the big walk and they get there first because they have to build a beautiful nest out of rocks. Really beautiful rocks, hopefully. Uh -huh. uh, and, and then the ladies come and then the boys show off their pads and sing them a beautiful penguin noise. And th that's how they select their mates. But Steve, you know, I mean, it's his first time doing this. So I guess we have to grant him a little bit of leeway. But from the minute we meet him, this guy is just constantly getting lost. He wanders into the weirdest places. Yes, he he was already like the last one in the pack. He had fallen behind before it barely even started. I mean, I fell for the guy because I often get lost when I'm going <laughs> places too. But he's a man, he won't ask for directions. So, you know, he does a lot of wandering. He's the last one to the breeding grounds. So he doesn't have the best rocks. And uh, I think other men, man penguins kind of see him as a bit of a rube. They're stealing his rocks. They steal his little rock collection, guys. Oh, I mean, it's smart. Smart thinking. Don't do all the hard work of picking the best rocks if Steve's just going to leave his unattended. And Steve, you know, he's low on the totem pole. He can't really just accuse, you know, macho penguin guys of doing this. So he just has to put up with it. So, is he going to get the prime pick of the ladies? Well, listen, the honey he ends up with is very sweet. So, she he didn't like do nice lady. badly, yeah. but uh, was one of the last ladies. I mean, she's maybe a bit of a Steve herself. <laughs> well, she was one of the last ones. Everyone had already paired, and then their uh, babies were some of the last to be born. That's true. So they're late bloomers. They're late bloomers. They're a bit behind. They are a bit behind. But they do okay for themselves. Yes. Now, uh, the guy who, who writes the story about, you know, this big love story and the rock pile and the babies, I mean, they really do tell a story and you really believe that Steve is this great character, you know. And Ed Helms is voicing. He's not just a narrator, because he kind of no, does, the, he penguin does voice. the penguin voice. You feel like you're <laughs> right in there, and it's a lot of fun. This it might is. be the most fun one to watch. I think visually the underwater one is really cool, but like the character the character work we do with Steve here is phenomenal. It's very funny. It's funny. Yeah, I mean... And they also have some great songs on this soundtrack. They, they have, like, 80s ballads. Yeah. I mean, it, it's almost as random as that one seed in Tiger King, where the guy's on the sea do and Oh, yeah. It's random, but it works in the context. I was thinking Frozen 2 and Kristoff does oh, the music yes, video. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> That's good. But it works. It, it does it's work. It's really... It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun movie. And it also has some great photography mm -hmm. where we see these penguins underwater, getting in and out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, so people are actually diving in Antarctic waters to get this footage, which is crazy. It is. Uh, and I read that they spent like 900 days getting enough footage for a 70 minute movie. Unreal. So these are very dedicated crews. Uh, another thing we've discovered that on Disney Plus, most of these documentaries also have a making of. And I think that's almost just as interesting because uh, you get to meet the crew who is dedicated enough to spend a year in the desert following elephants, yep. who is diving with sharks and killer whales in the ocean, who is freezing out in the Antarctic, even though it is their summer, it's still it's really still cold. freezing. Yeah. And yeah, they uh, just practically become part of that penguin tribe. Because even yeah. during the credits, you see a you little see bit a little of it, of and it. it's cute. It is cute, mm -hmm. and it's amazing that you can tell they've been there for a while because the animals don't really react to them. No. They're just like, ah, oh, that guy's here again. And yes. just sort of walk around mm -hmm. and really do their thing, mm -hmm. which is what you are coming to watch. Yes.
And it's like, it is such a privilege to be able to watch these amazing, like, up close encounters. Yes, it is. And see this guy at the peak of his life, just Steve <laughs> having a good old time. Having a good old time. Mm hmm. <sighs> Going from bachelor to family man. Oh, yeah, in gosh. an hour and a half. Yeah. So these are movies I think worth checking out. Absolutely. They are fun. They are funny. And uh, like even the doll, uh, the penguin one is is from 2019. So these are really a new new stuff that you probably haven't seen before. There's great making of behind the scenes footage, and we think you should check them out. Yes, we do. Okay, great. I'm so glad we agreed, Sean. Yeah. We should have you know checked. Check beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> we should do that. But anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Bye.